across the world in the circle thereof. The spirit of prophecy is blowing. Oh, geez, I'm all messed up. And what it is, animals are walking in circles endlessly for weeks upon times. Reindeer, cattle, horses, sheep, ants, fish, birds, round and round they go. Where are they stopped? Nobody knows. But God knows. God is causing this as a sign upon the earth. These are the days of rivers uh, drying up. Euphrates is almost dried up as it was foretold. And uh, waters are turning as blood all over the earth by the spirit of Moses and the spirit of Elijah uh, is coming forth to, to tell the world that we've had false gods in this world too long. We need the God of the Bible who declares, I am the good shepherd over all the flocks of man. He says, I am the God of all mankind, Jeremiah 32, 27. This Lord God does not even exist in the world today. And so as heaven sent signs point everyone unto our true majesty of majesties, our carpenter of the ages, know that unless the restoration of Elijah, who I am, unless it is accomplished, that uh, he cannot even return as Acts 3, 21 says, if the restoration happens now, what restoration? The uh, restoration of Elijah, Matthew 17, 11. And people um, have embraced ignorance as bliss, but there is nothing more deadly than ignorance. For God's people have always been destroyed for lack of knowledge. And I am the messenger of the North who comes forth as the end time revelator. And so it's time to realize that unbelief and disobedience and lack of knowledge causes all carnal people to become carnal Muslims or carnal Christians or carnal Jews or carnal Hindus. And there is no damn good man anyways. Romans 3 is 10. We're all carnal anyways. But we're made even more carnal as we allow love within us to wax cold as we slowly commit the unforgivable sin of letting Christ be cast out of us because of our indifference and our unloving ways. And in this day, the Lord is angry at all ignorance that his people have been embracing. Shiloh was never Jesus. I am Shiloh, one whose eyes are red of THC and dull of wine. One transgressed by wine, Habakkuk 2, but the just will live by my damn faith because there is no good person anyways. It's Christ living in us as a child with our love alive as a verb that keeps us being pretty good people even when we're sleeping. And so neither shall the sons of Ishmael hear constant words from me about gloom, doom, and despair. I am Daniel of Windsor, the anointed messenger of Allah. And by that name, uh, it is time that all people must bow down to the secret name of Christ, which is love of Mark 4. Every knee will bow, bow down unto our beloved, who is the blessed and the adored. And so in this time, uh, it's time for all people of peace to to shine uh, as much as we can the love that Christ has given unto us. And it's time to bow down unto reverence, unto he who is standing on the great white cloud of Matthew 24, the great white cloud, same one of Revelation 14. For this is the hour that he removes his rebuke from off all people of the earth, exactly as Isaiah 25 foretold from off the latter-day mountain covered with food of Isaiah 25. And so the Lord said, Who will come and feed the master's household meat? Raise your hands to heaven and realize that I have been fulfilling so many Elijah prophecies that you might not even have known existed. But I am the writer, line by line, precept by precept, with the strong and mighty one come forth with stammering, shocking, scorn, friggin' lips, because I'm sick of 
preaching to people who don't give a damn and don't believe nothing that I'm saying anyways. But know that the sledgehammer of God shall now come down upon all those who shall be accursed and receive the diarrhea shit dung crap pie of Malachi 2 right in your eye and like chocolate syrup down your throat if you will not embrace that which exalts the kingdom of love and peace. And so in this hour, all faith is now obsolete on planet Earth, as Hebrews 8 says. The veil has been ripped off his latter-day mountain of 13,000 videos. And for our great I Am has blown upon me mightily 30 years ago as a, a magnificent mountain that could never possibly be cast down. I cannot be defeated, uh, and neither could Alexander the Great once he realized he was prophesied to be unbeatable. I stand in his shadow, or he stands in mine, because I stand on the shoulders of our great I Am's living word, our roaring lion of Zion, of lion, lion of Zion. And he's roaring as softly as a little itty bitty kitty's tiny, eeny weeny whisper and purr, his purr of kindness and love and mercy that endures forever. And so it's time to let love become our bed and love become our pillows and worship can become a feathery co covering, a feathery covering for all of us for the rest of our blessed lives if we will bow down and worship love alone. For God is a jealous God and all that is not love is not of him at all. So the Lord's prophesied latter-day harvest has come. It's time for the firestorm of eternal life that will already be consuming uh, those hearing its message over the flying uh, scroll of Zechariah 5, which is YouTube, the everlasting gospel that will go into people's house and consume their house and themselves from the inside, for joy is uh, inside job. And so it's time for fervent faith and love that's never possibly able to be lukewarm because love is patient and, and profitable in all things. Uh, if it is passionate and fervent, for there is no other true kind of love. And so it's time to behold our eternal love's greatest brilliance. He's shining as the star of stars, the star of Bethlehem. And he is now illuminating all nations, all tribes, all tongues, until he returns to a world at peace. So the master says unto all people, I am your God, you are my people. I have forgiven your iniquity, sending Iblis to the pit for a thousand years as Revelation 12 and Daniel 12, one say what happened in the latter days. And the Lord says, and I will write my law of love on your hearts Beyond that, none will ever even need to be taught of me, saith the Lord God Almighty, for all people of love shall know me. For I am love, 1 John 4, 7, living large in all those who will keep me alive within them. For the unforgivable sin is to kick Christ out of our heart, and then there is no forgiveness for us left at all as loveless people are become castaways, cast out to where the darkest, gross darkness of the ignorance of love has been. And so the above truth shall always hold true because such a shining, glorious light of love from the Lord God is much like a, a blazing supernova all ablaze with its infinite warming light which streams from our everlasting star of Bethlehem, only his most resplendent beauty uh, coming forth. Only that radiance alone is constantly bright enough with the strongest brightness of a total eclipse, which so easily blinds anyone daring to gaze at, at its beaming ring of fire. But our Messiah of the generations, he's also shining forth his glory, much like the flickering of a brightest candle blowing softly in the wind of blessedness during the night of holiness. Love is truth, and truth is love. And I am Elijah, I am Shiloh, I am the latter-day Daniel. So know well that love 
is also the fervent refiner's fire which purifies, the champagne that invokes rejoicing, and the special treat of kindness that brings forth much happiness. And nor does love, uh, true divine love, have any other desire aside from fulfilling more love from itself. For it's love alone that causes all of God's passionate people to discover that the purest form of giving can only come forth in honesty. When they get, dig deep to give deeply of themselves and deeply of their heart of hearts unto one another. For if we cannot love those who we can see, including our enemies, we can never love a God that we cannot see. And so in this hour, because the Lord's deepest love for man exists long before we loved him, he spoke this word of his comfort into existence through his prophetic word. Initially, there was a prophet by the name of John McNally uh, from Flames of Fire Prophetic Ministries. And he prophesied that I would become a sword prophet and the word div divinic and divine was spoken over me. And next thing I knew, I had open-eyed visions and I felt the wind of God coming at me as a hurricane, the gushing blessedness. And say not to that flood of love to stop in the middle of your dried up gourd. He will uproot all your dead roots and dead trees. The, for the wise have no root or, or ground to stand upon in the days of Elijah. And even though nothing truly divine could ever possibly be welcome, welcomed upon earth at first by anyone, because everyone is like us uh, ostrich, putting their head in the sand, ignoring the only words of love on the internet that could possibly make any difference in our world. Uh, for these are the days uh, that there are many dark sides of false prophets not steering all people towards the brotherhood of the blessedness of the unity of one that Christ prayed so passionately for, knowing he would send that covenant in the latter days so that the God's mystery of Revelation 10:7 would be over. So therefore his arms have never been too short to save. For his love conquers absolutely all fears. And miraculously, even those with no hands to receive evidence of his great love shall soon experience their great awakening. The, the, the rock is going to fall on you if you don't humbly fall upon the rock. And so it, trouble like there has never been is at the earth's doorstep. The great bearer of Daniel 7, 5, here's the word. Now you can eat all the flesh that you would like. So here are the word of patience, the last videos. Um, for in the latter days, in the days of the trial of all flesh, COVID, God is bringing his word of patience to keep everyone who will listen from the hour of the temptation not to change. For not to change is suicidal and we would all otherwise be destroyed. Just as Zephaniah 1.1 1, 1 says, no more birds, no fish, no mankind left at all, only death, Deuteronomy 18.18, 18, Acts 3. And lest the hearts of children turn to fathers and vice versa, total destruction, Malachi 4. Christ said, unless these days were cut short by his word, no flesh could be saved. And nobody's fucking listening to his word. And you're asking for your own death. You want to kiss your ass goodbye? Just keep fucking not liking these videos. And so it's time for a great awakening. And then shall the Lord's deepest love explode with all vibrancy. For the Lord's most perfect preparation of peace comes from his revelation of his unconditional love for all of us. Because it is most patient, kind, and his kind of love can never fail. Since he alone is the rampart, the shield, and the vindication of all of his faithful few. So let all the people of love now understand that everything we want from the Lord's love is on the other sides of our fear, which shall now be bridged over by his most fervent adoration for all people as he removes the veil uh, so that he can remove all of our shame and guilt by his word of revelation. 
found in Jeremiah 31. He wants to remove the yoke of the uh, burden of religiosity so that loving spirituality can be lifted up instead. And so in these days, may his Islamic dove of peace now prosper at this channel. For the greatest prison anyone could ever possibly live in is the fear of what other people think. Uh, for that reason, for two years, no one says hello. Everybody's a fucker. <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, I'll say fudge. Fudge. All emotional walls will soon come down for those cursing themselves by not liking what is good. Woe to those calling good evil and evil good. For the day of belief in the dog is near uh, as it's heard in faith. And uh, the weed and the terrors cannot grow together any longer at all. This is why the Lord knew this was coming. And the day of belief in the dove is now. And its only purpose is to magnify he who is our beloved, the blessed, and the adored. Because he alone is our buckler, the consecrator of all spiritual armor, the appointer of all offensive strategy of love. For love is a light. It is a glorious light, a resplendent light, and the light of love's greatest glory is always there for all people who will let it flow and go with the flow instead of against the flow. And it goes forth with a heart possessed. Uh, it, it cannot conquer a heart possessed by fear, though. But only the power of fearless unity of love is a light that can illuminate the whole earth. For the Lord God is a jealous God, and it is His name. His name is jealous. Nor would any, or, nor would He ever share His glory of love with any other gods. For only He is love, much less anyone else. So it is time for a, a supernatural computer virus it will now bring forth spiritual deaths unto many receivers born through this flying scroll, the curse of uh, Zechariah 5, and it'll go unto all those willing to die, to all the nonsense, to all the mumbo jumbo, and all the superstitious fluff that always goes along with utter foolishness of mixed up religious style faithfulness that, that Pharisees live by the vipers of humanity getting ready to receive big shit pies in their eye because God judgment, uh, God's judgment begins in his house. And so now hear this old people of the royal priesthood. It's the most exciting hour of all. Uh, and it's the kind of excitement coming that Christ created when he sent his apostles in Jerusalem to await his dove of love. For Jehovah Jireh, our provider, spoke, and he, he said, The vision is yet for the appointed time at the end, and at the end it shall speak, and it shall lie, and it shall not tarry. Wait for it, it will come. It is here, the vision is here. You may now behold my soul, which is not upright, but the just will live by my faith, even though um, uh, my soul has not been upright. But no, there is no good man, not even one. Romans 3.10. So listen now, all ye people of love who look to the holy light of our incomprehensible deity absolute. For this word of his fire of flame of love shall now serve mankind as a heaven-sent acid test that shall help all of us to separate those seeking the mind of he who is our true Lord of all men, our Lord of love who loved us even when we hated him. Because if people won't awake from their sleep, they're only foolish idiots who enjoy being mindless, mindless to love. Who wants to be mindless to love? For to even be, uh, to even be afraid of love is insane. And the definition of insanity is to keep doing the same thing over and over again. So we must change. And so it's time for the dove's preamble. And may you uh, be encouraged. And I am a slave to the Lord. I am the one foretold in Isaiah 49 who has done everything in vain. But I bring forth now a new constitution 
of blessings, a new white standard. We, the people who have received love's enlightenment, must pray at the crossroads of obedience to discover the excellence of love's oneness to Jesus, Isa Yeshua, long ago prayed for with the with great intercession through groans that could not be uttered through the fervency of his passion his love released now is the hour to establish accurate understandings of evil in order to defeat it with many new weapons of faith for the combined sinfulness within adam's race is far greater than the overall wretchedness of the devil now removed as Revelation 12 said would happen in the latter day because he used to be the accuser of the brethren and he can accuse no more for the obsolescence of Hebrews 8. All faith is obsolete because God's saying, I am your God, you are my people. And so the unholy state of humanity has had much less bad influence than that snake of Eden's vileness which God allows uh, to forgive our transgressions entirely as we repent and turn away from unseen wickedness. And so it's time that we turn around. And if we're not repenting, we should be uh, against all that would make us more loveless because that is the only unforgivable sin. And for such a time as this, has this passionate word of love uh, been given and endowed by our Lord God's most zestful energy and bestowed with its unchanging truth to a world that has changed God into respecter of men. He's changed God into a God of only conditional love and he's changed God into a God who's not the God of all mankind. Jeremiah 32, 27, who's not the good shepherd of all the flocks of man, John 10, a God that does not even exist. And so it now conveys the divine message to the Lord's chosen that whosoever gives, uh, whosoever gives should never remember, and he that receives should never forget. Nor are there any so blind as those who refuse to see that I am Elijah. And if that's true, praise God, that means Jesus is right behind us. What are you guys so anal retentive about? And so people need to stop feeling like we have to tightly embrace this heavenly work. Uh, if you want to live, you don't have to embrace this. But if you want to die, just don't embrace it at all. Because if this word is not embraced, God cannot cut these days short. We will spiral unto our own oblivion of Zephaniah 1.1. 1, 1. No birds, no fish, no more song of... of beautiful melodies and harmonies through uh, our feathered friends. And so uh, inner witness should be coming to anyone yielding to truth. And by the leading of our Lord's holy presence, our Lord of evermore shall now compel his flocks to abandon their ignorance about this fiery message of holy word of love that's bringing believers into the fullness of his glory. Before man is light and darkness, truth and error, and life abundant or accursed death forever eternally. It's your choice. And if you will not choose to like this, you will not like what's coming. Diary shit done crap pies, uh, uh, pies in the eyes. But also before all those with eyes to see its passion and lethargy, laziness, as well as a little strength and much weakness for the Lord's cherished Islamic dove peace that I'm reading from now brings forth the richest form of edifying scripture by God's word of love's equality for absolutely all people, not having loved one more than another. When he called King David the apple of his eye, he wasn't saying that he was his favorite. He was just an apple of his eye. What does that mean? It means that. It's pretty good. Apples are nice. But within this text, 
uh, this word of love that's aimed at destroying the leftover fallen satanic apostasy. People shall swiftly see why it's much easier for them to forgive their enemies than to do the same thing for their friends and relatives who have wronged them because they only have conditional love. Most people have no true unconditional love. Everyone wants to be forgiven unconditionally, but no one wants to love unconditionally. The great error of all spirituality. We have nothing but desolate heritages, Isaiah 49, 8 says, and I am reassigning uh, the truth about how to turn these things around. And so in this hour of love's greatest power, uh, love from love and hope from hope and peace from our prince thereof, and know that along the way unto all such realizations of truths, truest truths, that our Lord's chosen needs to realize badly that any truth told with bad intentions, manipulations, can even be worse than any awful lies that have been told by the most sneaky kind of offenders. You know, our heart's deviousness is never so traitorous as when it causes smiles to be painted on the faces of hypocrites who hide knives behind their back. Well, guess what? It's time to put away the butter knives and pull out the Ginsu chopping blades because the Lord shall now lead his sheep uh, into this anointed word of his highest praises, which extols his most glorious attributes while redefining his endless love and the bottomless sapphire sea of the crystalline blue ocean uh, from on high. And in this hour, Make sure you look up because we are instructed to do so for signs and for wonders. And for anyone that doesn't realize, uh, there are many things in the Bible seen as metaphoric that are literal. And one example of this is the new Jerusalem. And you can see it, uh, just Google image of the new Jerusalem, NASA, and you will see the images uh, of the city of beauty on high coming this way by the word of love. And many things that people thought were literal have only been metaphoric. Uh, you cannot uh, say believe and then you're going to be saved. Jesus said you cannot even tell about born again. It says the wind, you don't know where it's going. So uh, many are going to say, Lord, Lord, I believe. And he's going to say, get away. You let your love die. It's always been about love alone. And so the Lord shall therefore now lead his sheep. And uh, he is bringing forth a blinding new reflection of God's latter-day word. And it is stressing that the loveliness of our Lord of love's divine continence also becomes the continence of his flock, if only we will open our arms and embrace his truth for it shines brightly because his overflowing love uh, it becomes the true measure of every uh, eternal happiness so uh, as i go sing with me then the song of the dove grieve not the holy spirit of god whereby you are sealed unto the re day of redemption Revelation 9, 4, these are the days, 7, 7, 7, the mark of the Lamb is now being put upon the bride of the Lamb. So awake, awake, the hope of glory, Christ is thine, a child of glory art you, uh, O oh, ripe fruit of his flowering vine. The Spirit through the lonely night from earthly joy apart hath sighed for one that's far away, the bridegroom of thy heart. But see, the night is waning fast, the breaking morn is near, and Isa Yeshua, Jesus Emmanuel, comes with a voice of love, so that thy drooping hearts to cheer. He comes for all oh, his yearning heart, no more can bear delay, to scenes of full, un unmingled joy, to call his bride away. This earth, the scene of all his woe, a homeless wild to thee, but yet, the depth is deep, and his voice deep calls unto deep. 
and he calls all of our names as if we were the only one. For he is sitting upon his heavenly throne and its rightful king to see. You too shall reign, and he will not wear his crown of joy alone. And earth his royal bride shall see beside him on his pearly great white throne. Then weep no more, O children of love, who will like these videos. Tis all your own, his crown, his safe fortress, and his love and joy divine. And far sweeter is the Lord Jesus than all beside. And only now can he become the desire of all nations. Now that uh, his covenant has been given correctly as it is written. Therefore arise and open your eyes, open your hearts, so that the bride might finally see the glorious truth of love, that truth is truth wheresoever truth be found. So smile brightly, all you lovers of love, for he himself shall always be yours and eternally mine, and his mercy shall endure forever. And everlastingly can he be yours, all ye sinners, guilty of stealing that Lord of love's oversized heart, full of woeful forgiveness that's only found in his amazing love alone. And so it is time for the order of the grass. And then you might behold the prophecy of Habakkuk 2, 1, and bring forth new revelation of revelation of Christ's whitest fields. So say, O people of the book, you have no ground to stand upon unless you stand fast by the law, the gospel, and all revelation coming to you from the Lord. So let the flag of faith in Christ fly higher and bolder than ever, and let the emblem of the empty cross now be full of love as the Lord's obedient people now leave all apostate places. Uh, if the bad fruit is not taken away from the good fruit, all the fruit go bad. So the wheat comes with me, and the tares friggin' stay behind. I am one with <laughs> lips, frustrated friggin' lips. <laughs>